This was one, um, actually I got twice this week. So I said, all right, there's a practice exam out there. I won't say where I reworded it so I don't get in trouble, but um, two different people emailed me about it. So I said, okay, I'm going to go over this. So here's the question. A 60 year old woman comes in for a second opinion for her sleep apnea. The physician documents an extended history. She's had it for the past four months. Sleep is disrupted by frequent awakenings and getting worse due to anxiety and snoring. Current medication that she is now on is not helping. An extended review of systems indicates she feels tired all the time, has some joint stiffness and night sweats. She is going through a divorce. Doctor performs a comprehensive exam and moderate medical decision making. So this is um, from students that have either taken my blitz or the course, and I teach a method, locate your hem in time, which basically is saying, well, first identify the location or the category and subcategory of, of E&M. And in this case, um, the, the answers are 99203 and 204, which are office new patient codes. And then 214 is um, an established, and 243, I think, is a consult. So because they're coming in for a second opinion, we can cross off C and D, okay? So it's now going to be 203 or 204, and that's the tiebreaker that we want to try and um, figure out. So here's my little worksheet. Um, I tell you to write on your exam booklet or even in the real coding world on your, um, you know, whatever where you're keeping notes, locate and then H-E-M. And the goal is to fill in the, the, the blank to the right. So for location, we've identified its office new. For the, for the history, they didn't really come out and give us the history, okay? Which oftentimes on the board exam, they will do. The, but it did say the physician documents an, extend, um, an extended history. Well, for, for history and exam, they have um, problem-focused, expanded problem focus detailed and comprehensive. So expand, extended isn't one of those terms. So they technically did not provide outright what the overall history level is. Okay. But for exam, they did, they said, um, comprehensive exam and moderate medical decision making. So I put a C for the exam and I put an M for moderate decision making for the medical decision making. Okay. Now, when you look in your CPT book in the E&M section for Office New, you'd see that the, the C shows up on a level five or a 99205. So for shorthand, we just put a five. And the moderate medical decision-making shows up at a level four. So, so far, these are, these are the two levels. We need to figure out what the history is because for Office New, we know that we need to meet or exceed all three of the, the, the bullets for that exam. So what this is doing, it's making us work for the history. So for the history, since we have to work for it, we need to turn to our history table um, that you hopefully wrote in your manual. And you know what? I Let me see if I can get my document camera out for that. While she's doing that, I was going to mention, this is, this is classic for board exams. They're wanting you to um, they know you know how to find codes, but can you pick the right code? And by having to come up with the history, that shows them that you know how to pull the history out of um, your documentation and pick the correct code. Okay, are you guys seeing that okay? Yes, it looks good. Okay, so this is um, my page three of my CPT manual, which, you know, if you do the blitz or the course, you'll, you'll get a copy of this. So you, this is what you want to write in your worksheet and we're trying to fill in these blanks. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do on the slide. So since we're trying to figure out history, I'm going to go to the history table that I wrote in. And this is basically taking the, let me back out here just a little bit. I so, think you need to make it smaller. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> How's that? Perfect. Okay. So I'm, I'm a very visual person, as you've heard me say many times before, if you've listened to me on these videos, 
because um, when I see paragraphs of text, it's like Charlie Brown, wah, 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 I'm just not getting it. So I have to convert things to a visual. So all of this table is from the um, guidelines in the pages that precede this. Okay, so I just took history present illness. I turned to the definition for HPI and I saw that there was two possible scores. Okay, you see that extended? So that, that should look familiar. So an HPI, history of present illness, can be either brief or extended. Well, they told us it was an extended, right? Okay, so the next piece of history is review of systems. And you can have no review of systems done. You can have a problem pertinent, pertinent which is basically one system. Pro, uh, problem pertinent that's extended, that's two to nine or complete, which is 10 to 14 systems. Now, review of systems sounds a lot like the exam because you're talking about cardiovascular, genital urinary, so it sounds like things that you would examine, but it's what I call the, the talking, not the touching. Sounds a little perverted, but <laughs> um, they're asking the, question, the, the patient questions about those organ systems because it's something that they can't measure or palpate or you know weigh. They have to find out um, you know, well, you know, are you having headaches too? You know, that kind of thing. They can't look at you and, and see that you're having a headache. You have to tell them. Um, then, the, then the third piece to history is the past family social history. Or someone recently said, oh, pea fish. I'm like, okay, whatever works. <laughs> um, but there's three distinct pieces, past history, family history, and social history. So if you see documentation for one or two of those, it's considered a pertinent PFSH. All three, it's considered a complete. And then here's the four possible levels that we want to fill in on our H line down here. PEDC, problem focused, expanded problem focus, detailed or comprehensive. Okay, so they're making us work for it on the slide. Let me go back there real quick. There we go. So HPI is extended. Um, the ROS was extended. The past family social history is pertinent because when you read about it, it was just really talking about she's going through a divorce. Okay. So when you go back to the table, we're trying to plug in extended, extended pertinent. And the extended, we'll see, will come out to a, um, a C. The extended ROS comes out to a D and the pertinent comes out to a D. So let's see how that works out. Extended, extended, pertinent. All right, so here's extended. Here's extended. So since extended on this one, it shows up on both levels, we always give them the higher one. We always give them the most credit that we possibly can that they documented. So that's why the HPI is going to get a C. Okay, but the extended for ROS only shows up at this row, so they get a D. All right, and then the pertinent gets a D. And when you put that all together, since this is a three of three table, the lowest wins, okay? And the lowest in this case is going to be the detailed. All right, so now we come along and now we can, where we had not provided outright, we figured it out, it's a D, it's a detailed. And when we turn to the 99203 um, and four code, we can see, when it's three of three, we code to the lowest. So what's the lowest between a level three, four, and five? A level three, okay? So the answer for this case is 99203. The reason this kept coming to me is they had it wrong in the answer key. They were telling them it was it was B, it was, or it was 99204. So that's where the confusion was coming and they thought they were doing this pattern correct, but how they tricked them was they used this extended history and they're thinking, oh, E, extended, but it's actually expanded problem-focused history. So you, you had to go back and really look at it closely and use that table. So um, for those who haven't taken their certification exam, the heads up for you is that it used to be, there's about 10 questions on E&M on the board exam. The, um, about two of the 10, I used to say they make you work for it. Now I'm hearing it's more like four to five of the 10. So definitely make sure you write your tables in, in your, your CPT manual so you can use them to help you figure out the, the missing slot. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. 
go to www.codingcertification.org.